Hey, I'm Scott Cochran, the editor of U.S. Rider News, here with uh, Two Wheel America. And we're in Augusta, Georgia, the Garden City, home of the Masters, and we're downtown on the Augusta River Walk. Behind me is the Savannah River, and we're here with the Suzuki C90T Boss Motorcycle. The T designates the Touring, and the Boss stands for Blacked Out Suzuki Special. I'm pretty sure someone in the naming meeting said, that bike is the boss. And they liked the moniker so much they created the definition to fit the initials. But it's black. The wheels, forks, exhaust, frame, suspension, bags, just about everything they could black out, they did. And the blacked out look is in style right now. Both Harley and Victory have blacked out models, but I think Suzuki nailed the look with this model, as it received a lot of attention everywhere we rode it. Now, I'm not going to go over all the specs, but it's a 90 cubic inch, 1462cc liquid-cooled 54-degree V-twin. It's got a 5-speed shaft drive with a 65.9 inch wheelbase, and it's just north of 100 inches total length. The seat height is 28.3 inches, and it has a curb weight of 800 pounds. Now, it's heavy, but it's not clunky, and it handles quite well. In our riding test, we found the C90T produced a ton of torque all the way through the entire gear range. And the reason for that is Suzuki used the same dual throttle valve induction system on this bike that it used on the GSX R race replica bikes. And that induction system, that throttle delivers a smooth and fuel efficient throttle. And all that power is pushed out through the shaft drive onto a 130 millimeter 17 inch front tire and a 200 millimeter 16 inch rear tire rolling on cast aluminum spoke wheels. But a big knock on this boss is its brakes. They're frankly soft and squishy and a little downright scary for a big bike like this with so much grunt. In fact, I almost took this test bike back to the dealer because the front brake lever would pull completely in without biting. The brake lever is adjustable for reach, but not for a pull. So you've got, right now it's set on the uh, farthest out. You can, uh, it's simple, easy adjustment to make it, to make it real easy to, uh, to pull. But you go all the way in, and you still don't have the kind of brakes you should have. Now, on one hand, there's no way you're going to lock the front wheel and low side on this bike. But it was also going to be tough to stop it in a hurry. So either I got used to it or the brakes may have self-adjusted enough, but eventually I felt I could stop it in normal riding, so the brakes got a little firmer on the front. But uh, quite frankly, I never pushed the bike to its limits again. I mean, this bike begs for ABS, and I'm hoping Suzuki designers include that feature in the next upgrade. Now, before I discovered how soft the brakes were, I took it out on a country road, and I opened it up. And... Um, you know, I hope the police are not listening, but 107 miles per hour was the top speed. I'm pretty sure without that hulking windshield up front, and the boss has a real big windshield. I don't know how big it is, but uh, it's bigger than, than most production bikes of its, of its class. Um, without that big windshield, I'm sure the boss would pick up a couple more miles per hour. But again, without stouter brakes, I wouldn't recommend it testing that theory. Everything on this bike looks bigger than it really is, with the exception of that windshield. The gas tank looks like it should hold over 5 gallons, but its capacity is right at 4.8 gallons. The saddlebags from the outside look huge. And while Suzuki did a superb job on the styling and matching the bags to the blacked out theme of the bike, Suzuki didn't fulfill the promise of cabiner storage. However, there is enough room to pack for a weekend tour for two or a short week for one. In the comfort department, I give the boss high marks. The seat is plush and cut just deep enough to be comfortable, but not scallop so much that you get stuck in one position. You can adjust up or down or around to, to relieve the pressure points. The passenger seat is a bit tall for shorter pillion partners, and I heard from mine that uh, it was a little hard to get up on it, especially if you got a short end seam. But the width and comfort got real high marks. So we all decided that was an acceptable trade-off. And part of what makes the ball so comfortable is this pliant suspension at the rear wheel. You've got 100 millimeters of travel. 
Now, there's another nice feature on this bike, and it's the helmet lock. But again, I got to ding it because there's only one lock. And when you use it, it pretty much blocks the operation of the left saddlebag. So you have to take the helmet off to put anything in the bag or make sure you've got everything in that bag you want before you lock your helmet onto that lock. Now, while we're talking about the bags, my other knock on those saddlebags is the locking mechanism. I'm grateful for Suzuki to, for putting locks on the bags because other manufacturers sometimes don't see the need for locking bags. But I wish these bags could be unlatched without the key. The key I'm talking about is the ignition key. It turns the locks, uh, it turns the uh, bags too. And that's another plus. You only have to have one key. But it, And while I understand the advantage of, of this design because there's no way you're going to have these bags open at highway speed because you've locked them and you've un and released and uh, taken the key out. But it's just aggravating having to unlock the bags each time you want to stick something small in or take something out. Um, so, you know, I wish there was a little different design there. Information is fed to the operator uh, via a large analog speedometer and a five-segment fuel gauge. It's and an, a clock that's always on, a gear indicator, odometer, and two trip meters. You get a lot of information on this bike. Um, one thing I didn't like about it was where the information sat, which is on the uh, top of the, uh, of the uh, fuel tank. I wish there was a way to move them up a little further up on the uh, on the triple trees there and right directly in front of you, the way the uh, Indian and the Victory and, and the newer models are. But I understand for styling cues that it, it, the way it worked was on the uh, on the tank and that you know it works for them. Now the boss comes with floorboards for the operator and pegs for the passenger. There is a heel toe shifter um, for the driver, but personally. I don't find a heel toe shifter very useful. I have to kind of remind myself it's there because you have to pick up your heel and press down on it. You really can't rest your heel there. And, um, you know, I, I can shift just as fast with a toe shifter as I can with a heel shifter. Now, the Boss retails for $13,999, and it comes in candy Sonoma red or gloss sparkle black. There is an add-on bike rest luggage rack that Suzuki sells for uh, $330 for the mount, $325 for the actual pad. And, and I recommend if you're planning any serious touring, this is a must-add-on accessory. Now, overall, we put 500-plus miles on the Boss during our test. We found it to be a dependable, good-looking, and powerful touring cruiser. It's perfect for a weekend getaway. And once you add on the optional luggage backrest combo, you can strap on an aftermarket bag from Kiriakin, and you're all set for a longer adventure. So we've told you what we like and what we don't like about the bike. And uh, before I get out and ride in the beautiful Augusta and see some of the sights, I want to thank the guys at Statesboro Polaris, Suzuki down in Statesboro, Georgia, Mike and Donna Wallace, for uh, loaning us this motorcycle and uh, letting us put uh, about 500 miles on it. We've really enjoyed it. And... Uh, we want to tell you that even though we've knocked a few things on it, we think this is a good purchase to make. If you're the kind of guy that likes to take a weekend trip, uh, maybe a weekend trip for two, or maybe a week-long trip occasionally, we think this will be the perfect bike for you. So don't let the few things we highlighted scare you off. Um, it's really a good value for the money.